Hi, I'm Mr. Simons, and in this video, we're going to look at fixed versus floating exchange rates. Now, these are two different types of systems for determining the value of a country's exchange rates. Floating, very different from something being fixed and static, but both involve a lot of action and effort and interaction. So why don't we get started in looking at these types of exchange rate systems, fixed and floating exchange rates. Okay, so here we are. Uh, this little at symbol here just means that I hadn't done it yet. So I just put an at to remind myself to do this and that's what we're doing right now. So let's, blue's a good choice. Two hours later. So what we're talking about first is this idea of a floating exchange rate. Under a floating exchange rate, the emphasis is on market forces. So let's just get a highlighter so we can be really clear, is this idea that market forces establish the equilibrium price. I could talk about any currency here. A float is just where market forces establish the value of a country's currency. And when we talk about market forces, what we're really talking about is this. We're talking about the interaction of the demand and supply for a particular currency. That's all we mean by market forces. So the equilibrium in a floating system, because it's constantly changing demand and supply, that this equilibrium will change. And this equilibrium could change minute by minute, sometimes second by second in foreign exchange markets. And remember, oh, how would you remember? Maybe you haven't seen any videos. Uh, Forex just means foreign exchange. It's an abbreviation. So under a floating exchange rate, that demand for a currency comes from inflows into the balance of payments. So let's just go a bit slow here. So under a floating exchange rate, demand is inflows into a country's balance of payments. So what we're saying here is that demand for the currency is from all the people who want to buy that particular currency. So demand for Australian dollars, let's just be specific here. So let's say here, demand for Australian dollars comes from all the people that wish to buy Australian dollars and wish to take part in inflows into the balance of payments. So for example, maybe they want to buy Australian exports. To do that, they need Australian dollars. So that looks at the demand side of the floating exchange rate. Let's go green here. Then supply in a floating exchange rate system is represented by outflows from the balance of payments. So money leaving a country. So essentially it's the people that wish to sell a currency. And in this case, we're talking about the Aussie dollar. So I'll just flip this to green here. And so we're talking about here is the supply of Australian dollars is represented by money leaving a country, outflows from a balance of payments, say example for buying imports. And it's represented by all the people that wish to sell a currency. So remember, we're still talking about this floating exchange rate system. So what we're gonna do is we'll draw a picture uh, a graph, probably not a picture, I'm not a great drawer, um, of a floating exchange rate. And you can see here, I've left myself a note to draw the floating exchange rate diagram here, please. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so here we have our floating exchange rate diagram. So in terms of our equilibrium, equilibrium here being point A, that what we can see is that point A occurs when the supply of Australian dollars equals the demand for. And just pay attention to that language that we look at the supply of Aussie dollars and demand for Australian dollars. And again, that could be for whatever currency you're looking at. 
So what we can see is that at point A, supply equals demand, we get our equilibrium. And in this example, our equilibrium is where one Australian dollar buys us 80 cents US. So not too bad in the scheme of things, right? So what we can then see is that the dollar will change depending on the impact of market forces. So if there's an increase in demand or a decrease in supply, if there's a decrease in demand or an increase in supply, that's going to change the value. But this value is changing all the time because of market forces. So this value, this equilibrium value changes constantly or constantly changes because of changes in market forces. So maybe there's a change in demand or a change in supply. Okay, so this is the floating exchange rate. Now let's move to the fixed exchange rate. Okay, one thing I may not have explained previously is this idea of a, uh, a clean float, a clean float. Basically, when we're talking about this idea of a clean float, what we're talking about is there is no market intervention. That what's happening is that free market forces are determining the value of the currency. So here that free market forces determine, oh, what a poor E, determine the value of the Aussie dollar. And remember, if you're not talking about the Aussie dollar in another currency, that's the same thing. Can you see in this section, we're no longer looking at a clean float. What we're looking at is a fixed exchange rate, which is not a clean float. So we're no longer looking at this, either that either. So if we look at a fixed exchange rate, what happens is that the RBA or the government officially sets the exchange rate, right? So that the RBA, which is the situation for Australia, the Reserve Bank of Australia, they intervene in the market. And basically they affect the quantity of dollars in the market. So the RBA affects the quantity of Australian dollars in the foreign exchange market. So why don't we have a look at what the uh, fixed exchange rate diagram looks like and then we'll get into this additional theory. Okay, so this in black is the floating part of the diagram, right? This looks very familiar to the diagram we just drew. So what we do when we get into a fixed exchange rate, and let's put this in red, is that the government says, mm, we don't like that value. We don't want one Australian dollar to get us 80 cents US. In fact, we think that the Australian dollar should get you more, right? So what happens is that the RBA acts to do this. So that the RBA acts and it sets the exchange rate higher. So what happens instead is we don't have equilibrium A where one Australian dollar gets us 80 cents US. Now one Australian dollar gets us 90 cents US because the government through the RBA has intervened. So instead what we get are points B and C and you can see here point B that relates to the demand curve and then point C relates to the supply curve. So what happens is that when the RBA sets the exchange rate higher, that there's actually now going to be excess supply because more people want to sell Australian dollars at this higher rate than wish to buy it. So in looking at this process, so the RBA wants the exchange rate to be higher. So to get here, to get to uh, the higher exchange rate, the RBA would need to buy Australian dollars uh, to push up the demand and it would need to sell foreign exchange, right? Because it's got to exchange something for those extra dollars. And what's going to happen is that the RBA is going to keep buying and selling to keep it at that level. So can you see this point here? To maintain a fixed exchange rate, because the RBA can't say, okay, now this is the value because every day foreign exchange markets go up and down, uh, people buy and sell Australian dollars. So to keep uh, the relationship between demand and supply, the RBA and government would need a large reserve of foreign exchange 
to buy and sell Australian dollars all the time and maintain that intended exchange rate value. So the RBA has to keep buying Australian dollars and selling foreign exchange to stay at this point, which is artificially higher than equilibrium. Now, the problem here is that if the RBA or the government runs out of foreign exchange, then the dollar won't stay here. It's going to fall back to equilibrium or even lower. So the RBA needs lots of foreign exchange and Australian dollars on hand to be able to support the currency. What we're seeing here is a fixed exchange rate and the value is fixed higher than equilibrium. So the value of the Australian dollar is fixed higher than at equilibrium. Now, if you were looking at the other way, maybe the RBA says, ah, oh, the value of the Australian dollar is too high, we should make it lower, then it would just do the other thing. So let's draw that here. So let's say that the RBA is like, no, we really want it to be 70 cents because that would make exports more competitive. So instead we have points D and E and essentially, let's just cheat, let's just say these are the same points that essentially now, right, when we have these points here that we've got demand will exceed supply. More people want to buy at this level than wish to sell. So then to keep it at this level, the RBA does the opposite. It's going to sell Australian dollars to take the value down. And when it sells Australian dollars, it needs to buy that foreign exchange. So this is the process of a fixed exchange rate. And what I want to be very clear about is it's not like the RBA decides, okay, the value of the currency is this, and that is all it is. The RBA has to keep acting, keep buying and selling to make sure that the value stays at that level. So be very clear about what the RBA needs to do, right? To increase the value of the Australian dollar under a fixed exchange rate and what it needs to do to depreciate the Australian dollar under a fixed exchange rate.